a scathing letter of rebuke to the US government and a high-level resignation. The American special envoy to Haiti, Daniel Foote, leaving his post in protest, telling the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, on Wednesday that he will, quote, not be associated with the United States' inhumane, counterproductive decision to deport thousands of Haitian refugees from the US-Mexico border. It comes as chaos intensifies at the Port-au-Prince airport. Migrants arriving in droves from encampments at the US border with Mexico, they were deported en masse back to Haiti by the American government. Many longed for a better life in the US, desperate to escape devastating poverty, political unrest, and escalating gang violence in the Haitian capital. The former U.S. envoy describing the situation as so dangerous that American officials in Haiti are confined to compounds. But these Haitian citizens have nowhere to hide, forced to return to the homeland they were trying so hard to escape. Those words by the U.S. special envoy about the grinding poverty, the endemic violence and the lack of basic resources here in Haiti also reflected in the assessment made by the Department of Homeland Security in the spring when it decided to accord special protected person status to those Haitians already in the United States. And yet, the Haitians being returned at the moment here in their hundreds every day haven't even been given the chance of applying for asylum. Many return after a treacherous, sometimes deadly journey, winding through South and Central America, some crossing nearly a dozen countries en route to the U.S. Some of those we spoke to tell us that once at the border, U.S. officials treated them more like inmates than exhausted refugees. When we got to the U.S., they closed all the access points, and we could not go to buy food. When we arrived in the U.S., the authorities put us on a bus and sent us to jail and said we would be released in two days. They put chains on our feet, around our stomachs, on our hands. They put us in cars and took us to the airport. Some deportees tell us they didn't know where they were being taken when U.S. authorities ushered them onto a plane. It wasn't until landing back in Haiti that they discovered it was a return to where they'd started a seemingly tragic end to a long and desperate journey, it appears, was all for naught. Melissa Bell, CNN, Port-au-Prince, Haiti.